everyone, welcome to Furry Friend Zone. Today we're going to do a full groom on a golden retriever. This lovely golden retriever right here. So stay tuned and we'll fill you in on all the deets. So this is Ivy. She's a four-year-old golden retriever. Um, she's an absolute sweetheart. So today we're just going to show you um, the, the bath, the blowout, the brush out, and then the trimming up of all the, the bits and pieces of, of a retriever to make them look beautiful. Retrievers are awesome. They, I love doing retrievers because the before and after, they look so beautiful when they're finished. But they can be um, tough to groom when you're grooming on your own because they get very, very, they, they fall asleep. They're like, it's like they're, they're drugged when I'm grooming them and they, they get all lazy and heavy. So, but she doesn't, she's, she's awesome. So she's, she's a very good one to, to show. So just stay tuned and we'll show you all the, um, the steps to grooming a golden retriever. Okay, so what I've done is I put Ivy in the tub. She's got a noose around her so that she's nice and secure. And I have these clips on the wall to, that I clip the noose to. So that, and they're drilled right into the wall so they can never come out. And um, this is the shampoo that I use. I actually use this on all my dogs depending on if they have skin issues, etc. But this isn't a really, really good shampoo for double coated dogs because it really loosens and releases the undercoat. And I've really not, I've had very, very few dogs that have ever reacted to it. So it's a great shampoo. And you also water it down one to three. So I've put in the shampoo and then I can pr probably actually add a little bit more water to this. And then what we do is soak her down to get her as wet as possible. I always go right around the neck first because once they get their head wet, that's when they start shaking. So we water them down really well, coat them with the shampoo, scrub them up, and then rinse. Right, Ivy? You good girl? You good girl? Yeah? Here, you good girl. Yes, you are. Make sure that you, when you're washing around their neck, that you get right around their neck and face, right around their ears, because that's where they can get really, really dirty, because that's where they scratch and they rub their head on stuff. And this is where the retrievers almost fall asleep, because it's like they're getting a massage, and it feels so good, eh, Ivy? Did it feel good? Right underneath the neck, where they get smelly face. And I'll do her head after, but I like to go around the neck and then work my way down. Make sure you scrub in really well and make sure you really get the feet because obviously they're the dirtiest as well. So you need good little pedicures going on here, right? I was panting. She does get a little bit nervous, but she's fine. She's a real sweet. Retrievers are very sweet, but she's extra sweet. Make sure you have enough shampoo on them because you really want them sparkly clean. In this area back here is another area where retrievers get really, really matted. So you have to really wash that out well and then make, <clears throat> make sure that you brush it. Sometimes retrievers come in and um, they're so matted back there that you can't even brush it out. Like she's got a few mats, but these probably, once it's washed, They'll brush out. No problem. 
They, this is where the hair back here is usually like kind of a different texture and it's much thicker. And that's part of the reason why it gets matted. So what I've done is spun her around and done the other side. And then now I'm gonna just do her head. The only issue when you do their heads and you get them really, really wet, a lot of dogs don't tolerate the dryer on their head, so it's a lot harder to get them dry, but you have to get the face clean. So, and make sure you, you don't get water in the ears. That's another, a lot of dogs are prone to ear infections and water in the ears. If I know that ahead of time, I put um, cotton balls in their ears. And then when I'm rinsing, I'm just very, very careful not to get water in their ears. So she's scrubbed up really, really well. Her feet are good. Her cute little butt is good. Her little face is good. Right, Miss Ivy? So we're ready to do a rinse. Right. Ooh. So now we're gonna rinse her out. One of the most important parts of rinsing is you have to make sure that you get all the soap out because that's when their skin can get really, really irritated. It's just like leaving soap on your own skin, like it dries it out, and if they're sensitive to, to soap, that's when they're gonna have a reaction. So once I get main, all the main soap residue out, and I go over, and I go over multiple times, and then you can pretty much feel it, and you'll see it in the tub where there's suds still coming off of her, but you can feel it mainly with, um, with your hands. And that's what I find when um, when I have helpers. They think the dog is rinsed, but it actually isn't, because I always check them. And I'm always doing extra little rinses because the soap is not completely 110% out. And you can, it almost squeaks, because it's, and it would just be like your own hair. So just be aware of that, because it's important. So now she's all rinsed off and I can feel that she's squeaky. So then I get a towel and this is important too because this saves a lot of drying time. Take a towel and really, really towel dry them as much as you can so that all the excess water comes out in the towel. But go all the way down the legs, the feet, go underneath. With a bigger dog, you probably need two towels and then you'll feel the weight of the towel. So all that water that you got off of them, that helps too. Right, Ivy? That's a good girl. Yeah, let them shake because that gets rid of a lot of the water as well. So once you've done that, what I usually do is I dry most of the, not most of the dry in the tub, but I get all the excess water off in the tub. And then I move them to my grooming table and finish the, the, cause you won't get them perfectly dry in the tub cause the tub's wet. There's still a bit of water in the bottom. So just blow off what you can and then, um, and then move her over. This is a good time to clean their ears. So what I do with that, as you can see, her undercoat is already coming out. And oh, another thing I didn't mention with that shampoo, if you feel that a dog has a ton of undercoat, what I do with that shampoo is I scrub them up like I did with her, but I leave it on for like 10 minutes and that will really, really loosen it. She's, she, you don't need to with her, but um, with a coat like, like, um, like say a uh, uh, German Shepherd comes in or a Bernese Mountain Dog, when they have a really, really dense undercoat, this shampoo is awesome for that. So now I'm gonna clean her ear, cotton ball. I soak it with this stuff, it's called Ear Clear. It's really, really good. Show Season makes this. It's a cleansing solution, but it, it maintains healthy tissue and it's got, it's got um, um, what's it called? Witch hazel in it, which, which helps with um, yeast in the ear. And her ears are really, really clean. So I'm, I'm gonna guess nothing's gonna come on this but I check them anyways. And we have another video 
on cleaning dogs ears um, and I just go into more detail about ear issues and stuff like that so you can check that video out but it's important to make sure that the ears are clean and the in, in the bath is the best place to do it for sure Oops. and make sure you use two cotton balls one for each ear that's important too because you don't want to pass anything from one ear to the other by using the same cotton ball. So you have to make sure you can see the undercoat here coming out. This is a really strong dryer. It's got two settings. Some have variable settings. This specific dryer I'm using has two settings. So when I'm doing her body, I keep it on the strongest. And then when you go around their head, I would lower it. And just make sure when you're in the face area, like cover up her ear when you're, you're doing around her ear and make sure that's all dry. And same with their eyes. Just make sure that you're not like blowing the dryer right in her eyeballs because that's not very nice either. So, and then just underneath her chin, just make sure that you've got her face protected from from the strong the strong dryer so i'm just going to keep on drying her and then i'm going to move over to the grooming table so i've i've moved her over to the grooming table and i'm just going to complete drying her here um and as far as drying goes you have to make sure that they're completely dry because Retrievers are susceptible to hot spots and groomers um, tend to, for some reason, I've had people say, oh, the dog got a hot spot after it was groomed, but it could have been two weeks later and the dog could have been, after they get um, groomed, do they rub their face and outside in the grass and stuff like that? And hot spots can, they can come from bacteria or sometimes if a dog's not completely dry, that's why they get them when they've been in lakes and stuff like that. So just to save any, issues I just make sure the dog is completely dry so that if they do get a hot spot it's not from from the groom which it shouldn't be because the dog is clean but that's just a just a heads up on that one. If you have a dryer that's got different um, speeds I would keep it on the lowest speed just to start off just to see how the dog's doing with the dryer um, and then a variable speed dryer obviously would be the best if, if you're at home and you're using just your hand dryer make sure it's on cool and it'll take a, a while longer with the, with a hand dryer a human dryer but um, just make sure that the dryers on a low speed and what I do is once the dryers on it's hard to talk when the dryers on so I'll explain it now when you're doing their ears, like see how the ear is really, really wet in there? That has to be dry. So what I do is I cover up the ear canal with my hand and then I'll dry in here like this. Just make sure that you don't take the dryer and blow it right into their ear because that can hurt them and it's very, very loud. And then when you're doing the top, hold the ear down and dry same thing all the way across and just make sure that the, the dryer's not going into their ear. And then when you're doing their eyes, just kind of cover up their eyes and make sure that the dryer doesn't blow right into their eyeball because that's not gonna be very pleasant either. And then same with underneath their chin. Just make sure that you've got their face protected and you're going under here. And just make sure, like I said, um, oh no, I didn't say that, this. But make sure that it's completely dry because if the face isn't dry, that's when you can create hot spots and stuff like that if the dog goes outside and starts rubbing its face and in dirt and whatever else so hopefully that helps and um, just do do it slowly and on a low speed and the dog will eventually get used to it some don't but most will and another tip too is this dryer you can take the nozzle off and then when you have the dryer on it actually reduces the the strength again so then I can just keep it on low and then just dry it like that. If the dog's really bothered by it, it'll take quite a bit longer, but 
that's another tip as well. She's really good with the dryer, so I'm just going to put the nozzle back on and keep it on low. Another tip that will help blow out the undercoat is if you hold the dryer really close to their skin so that the moisture that's sitting on their skin that's loosening the undercoat, this will blow the undercoat right out. You can see it coming out right here even on around her ears and see look at her ear is still really really wet so you just have to make sure that all gets really really dry so ivy's all dried out now and as you can see like she, the the undercoat's been kind of brought up to the top so i'm just going to take a slicker brush it's a fairly firm one and i'm going to make sure all the, the undercoats brushed out and retrievers like most dogs tend to get mats behind their ears Sometimes retrievers get them really, really close to the skin and you have to shave them out. She doesn't have any right now, which is great. So we don't have to shave. And this is just gonna brush out all the undercoat. And she doesn't have a ton, but she definitely has some. You can see the little mats that are coming out. And so just make sure you run the brush all over her whole body, underneath her arms. And just be aware of how aggressively you're brushing because this, this is fairly firm and it could irritate the skin. If you keep brushing over the same spot over and over, it could irritate her skin. So just, and what I do in the back, I always call them the pants. When you're brushing this out, because this is the coarsest coat part of the coat, I always put my hand under there so that the brush is rubbing against my hand instead of their skin. And I can feel it on my fingers. You're lifting up your leg. And I can feel that she's got some mats there. And if I can't get them out with the brush, sometimes I have to take, sometimes I just take a scissors and I'll just slice through the mat. Just watch the skin. There's one there that I may have to cut out. You won't be able to see them with the, but you can definitely feel them. So just make sure that you're when you're brushing, like I said, you don't go right on the skin. And yeah, she does have some. I'm gonna have to cut them out or, or clip them out because they're they're too close to her skin because they're right around her, her little crotch area. They're right in here. I can feel them. You can probably see them. So you can see the mats right there. And they're right against her skin. Like that's a big chunk of mat right there. And right here. So I'm just going to clip those out. You could cut them out, but it's, it's safer to use a clipper. So that she's got quite a bit of undercoat coming out. Um, she's not... And this is when you realize that they're not completely dry. So I'm going to have to run the dryer over her again. And then I'll start, um, I'll start trimming her once the, uh, the brushing's finished. So now I'm going to trim her nails. Um, Sometimes I do dog's nails before I put them in. Larger dogs, it's easier to do them after because the bath sometimes softens, the warm water will soften the nails and they're just not as brittle. So I'm just gonna trim her nails first and then I'm gonna trim the pads of her feet and do the little lion feet first, which are my favorite on Golden Retrievers. So I generally flip the foot backwards because you can see where the quick is. 
right there. So you can see, you, you have a better idea of where you can trim the nail back to. So I'm going to, good girl, Ivy. We have a full um, how to trim your dog's nails video as well as a how to trim your cat's nails. But this is just a quick little, and they don't love it. And make sure you don't forget the dew claw. The dew claw is the nail that dogs have the most issues with. So now I'm going to trim the pads of her feet and I've put a 30 blade on my clipper. And this is just to get all the hair out of the pads of her foot. Good girl, Ivy. We also have a how to trim your dog's pads of their feet video. So take a, a look at that because it's a good maintenance thing to do in between grooming because that's usually people will say oh the dog needs to be groomed because the pads of the feet are long and it's, they're bringing in half the outside into indoors so that way you can maybe extend your groom a little bit longer if you can if you can manage doing that on your own good girl ivy good girl Hey, Ivy. Good girl. Say it's okay. Say. Your feet are a little bit wet, so. It's okay, puppy. Why do you stay? Good girl. And then if you miss any hair, you can always get some of it, the longer bits around the sides. So with the retriever's foot, I usually take a four blade and I go backwards on the feet so I can get, I call them the slippers, so I can get some of the hair off the slippers. And I just go backwards and then I take the scissors and trim. And then trim in between her toes. So you can see there's a mat in there. So just make sure you get that out. Watch your nose. And you want a straight line. Right around her. Stay Ivy. Good girl. This is one of the things that with a retriever that really makes them look tidied up is when you can trim those feet nicely. You're not going to get it all the first time and she's not cooperating with me at the moment. Good girl. See that one had a really big mat in between her toes. Oh! <laughs> Excuse you! That was a good belch. and I still see some in there. And then what you can do is, sometimes I use a dryer and I fluff the hair up, or I can just use a brush. You just brush back upwards. Stay. Good girl. There, and that does not look like a lion's foot. So cute. And then you can just go back after the, I usually do all four and then I go back and get all the bits that I maybe missed. Good girl. I also take a four blade and I run it down just below the hop right here. And then I, I run it backwards because that looks really nice when it's all trimmed short. And then I fix it up with the scissors. Good girl, Ivy. And then you can go back and just get any of the hairs that you miss. Good 
good girl. So this is another area that you trim on the retriever. So I usually hold the leg up and you want to trim it shorter here and then just follow a line, right? And then just sort of round it up. And everybody likes them different. Some of them don't want them too short. They want them natural looking. So you can just use, um, and then after you've done that, see that needs to be shorter there. Some people um, just want it natural. So they, you can just take thinning shears and do it. But Ivy gets trimmed up fairly tidy. And then once you've done that, you can turn the rest with the scissors as well. So it's nice and tidy. Good girl, Ivy. And if you have any lines that you don't like, you just go back with thinning shears and just make them so they're not um, as straight and they're blended a little bit better. There, so that's just tidied it up and it's not too much so you can still see how cute it looks. So there's the foot. And then the trimming of the leg. are all done. I'm just taking a comb and running it through to make sure and I emphasize over and over that running a comb through a dog after you've brushed them is key to getting all the mats out because you don't know what you've left under there if you don't run a comb through. So she's really nicely fluffed up and like I'm still getting hair out. So it's important to, to do that after she's dry and I'll fluffed and buffed up and it's running through nice and you can run it through your pants too and I'll be tidying that up as well now that it's all completely fat free and same with your tail I see there's still a few knots I missed there Good girl, Ivy. There, got them all. So the next thing I trim is all the feathering underneath. Oh, there's a little mat. Now see, I just found another little knot right here. That's why it's so important to run the comb through because I would have missed that with the brush. Good girl, Ivy. Did I get it all? Oh, there's still one there. That one I may have to turn out a bit. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim under here. So just make sure it's brushed nice. And then I usually lift this leg up. And I start from just below the chest and go straight across. And I usually do one side at a time. So I'm taking about two inches off. So you can see you have to be careful, she's a girl, but the boy is right here, stuff going on. So you have to be careful you don't nick that. And then I'm going more in the middle now. And then the other, you can go to the other side here. And then I usually go to the other side of her. Same thing. Now I'm using curved scissors right now, and I was holding them probably the, the opposite way to what I should have, but it really doesn't matter.
Okay, so now that that's trimmed, I'll take thinning shears just to make it, I blend it in a little bit with the thinning shears. Just to give it a more natural look. What I do with the head, I'm not finished the body yet, but um, the head, it's got a lot of flyaways, like on, on the top of the ears, and you see that after you've dried. So I just take the thinning shears. I don't generally take scissors, whoops. I don't take scissors because this part, you want it to look natural. So I just sort of trim under here. Can you see okay? And just blend in. Good girl. And like, look at the hair that's coming out. These thinning shears I got on Amazon. And I know you get what you pay for, but honestly, for someone that's just doing this at home, these these suckers aren't bad at all for the price. Now she's still a bit wet there, so I'm gonna have to go back and dry her. Yeah. Sometimes you think they're dry and then you go back and feel them and they're not dry because like the moisture is coming out from, from underneath. Now the chest area, I do the same thing. So once you've done the head, like she's got some flyaways here. I would never take the scissors to that just because you want it to look natural, but trim it a little bit. And then under here, and thinning shears are still very sharp, so you have to be very careful. And this is a good place to use thinning shears as well, because this just blends in nice. Stay, hun. Good girl. I want you to bend down and me nip your nose. Yeah, you're a good girl. See how that just blends it in really nicely? And then from the front view, you can see if you've missed anything under here, which I have. Just even it out a bit. There, and that looks really cute. It helps that you're so cute too, doesn't it? Okay, and then the final thing that I do I use the largest attachment comb, which is the E, on top of a 30 blade, and I just run, oh, see that's what you don't want to happen. Now those just dropped, so this is a good example. These may need sharpened now, because the moment they hit the floor, it could get them all messed up, so you have to be really careful. You shouldn't really have them on the table when you're grooming anyways. Well, they feel okay still, but I always, as soon as the scissors hit the floor, a lot of the time they either need to be sharpened or they could be toast. So what I do is I take the attachment comb. Oh, this is making a lot of noise, it's rattling. And I just trim, I kind of just run it over top of the, the pants here to get some of the bulk off. And then I'll trim with thinning shears or scissors, depending on. So this is what gets really, really bushy on them. And some people don't want you to touch this at all, but I do, you know, tidying up to keep really, really thick back here. Pardon the noise, and that's the problem with the metal attachment comb. It can sometimes rattle around a bit. And then I usually take the comb. You still want it to look natural, but you want it to look tidied up. And then the thinning shears, be careful when you take because they're sharp. And 
you want to clean right around her bum as well. So just make sure that's all cleared out in there. But you don't want to go too high up her tail. So just make sure her little poop area is clean. And then with the tail, I, I like to leave the tail really natural looking. So I usually just trim off a bit on the end and then you can just kind of hold it up and just sort of trim off the excess hair just so that it's even and tidy looking. And I literally could snip away like I just take my scissors out when I meet my customers because I see them and I get so anal. I'm like, oh, just hang on one second. I missed a hair. And they're like, you're nuts. I'm not anal about most things, but with grooming, I, I don't like seeing bits that I've missed. Nobody else would probably notice them, but I do. So there we go. There you go, Ivy, you look beautiful. And then I spray her with my yummy smelling cologne. And she's a new woman. Well, Ivy's all finished. I hope this video was helpful in grooming a retriever. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more informative videos. Have an awesome week.